But I've noticed among millennials, especially as well as Gen Z, there's this culture of surrounding yourself with a luxury lifestyle. Hello, lovely feminine friends. It feels so good to be back. Excuse me if I fumble a little bit throughout this video because it's been a while. It's been a couple of months besides the last video that I posted announcing my pregnancy. Thank you so much for all of the comments. I honestly thought that you would forget about me, but I was floored by all of the comments that I got and the likes on that video and the DMs and those of you who follow me on Instagram. Honestly, it warms my heart so much and this baby is already so loved by all of you. So stay tuned for more vlogs where I will talk here and there about pregnancy. Don't worry, this channel is not going to become a mommy channel uh, flooded with <laughs> mommy content and pregnancy content, but I will keep you updated, especially for those of you who have been here from the beginning and you've watched this journey and you've been here for my struggles, I appreciate it so much. For today's video, I thought we'd keep it a little bit basic and we would talk about habits that I have pertaining to my femininity, things that I do in my everyday life or practices, customs, I guess you could say, that I take on to feel more feminine, to look more feminine, and to overall embody my version of femininity, which leans more to a, towards a classic and traditional style. I guess you could kind of title this video Unconventional Things I Do for My Femininity, but I had already done a video where I talked about increasing your femininity if you have an unconventional lifestyle. So I didn't want to reuse that word. And for this reason, I chose to go with unique. And this doesn't mean that you don't do any of these things. I'm sure many of you will be listening to this video and bells will go off in your mind and you will think to yourself, wow, I do that as well. But these are just things that I've noticed haven't necessarily been talked about a lot in the femininity community. Before we get into the points, I always appreciate it when you leave me your comments down below. Let me know what you do that could perhaps be considered unique or unconventional to help your femininity. Anything you have to add to the conversation, as long as it's positive, I love to interact with all of you down below and it also helps the other sisters that watch this video because many of you like to read the comments along with this video to see what else could help you on your feminine journey. And please hit the like button if you like this video because it helps spread the message of the femininity revolution. So let's get into the points. The first thing that I do for my femininity that might be a little bit unique, especially in today's 21st century of the boss girl, boss babe, <laughs> do it all yourself, independent woman that is so valued and so put on a pedestal in our modern society. I let people help me. I let people do things for me. Of course, not to the extent where I take advantage of people because that would be wrong. But I let people open the door for me. I let people carry things for me. And of course, I always want to return the favor. But like I mentioned a minute ago, today's tendency is to do everything yourself, to prove yourself as an independent woman. But a big aspect of femininity is understanding the art of receiving, understanding that energy that will let you sit back and will let you receive from other people in a gracious way. Again, as long as you're not taking advantage of other people and their sincerity, let people help you because you can't do it all by yourself and you might get burnt out, especially if you are a woman who works outside the home. The next thing I wanna to talk to you about is kind of mental health boundaries. Not necessarily boundaries that we have with other people. I've mentioned that in a couple of my videos, especially my videos where I talk about criticism for being a housewife or a traditional woman. Go check those out in my femininity playlist. But what I specifically wanna to talk to you about today is the news. <laughs> is this constant bombardment of what's going on in the world and how it is absolutely terrifying and different experts speaking on the topic of current headlines, those things can be very overwhelming to your feminine energy. Now, I'm not advocating that you live under a rock and you don't consume any of those things. You don't have an opinion on what is going on in the world so that you can weigh your morals against where you perhaps stand when it comes to these events. But a lot of times we are over consuming things that don't necessarily pertain to our domain or occupation. And it's funny because as I was writing this point down, I went for a walk and I listened to one of my favorite podcasts. If you've been here for a year, I mentioned it a whole year ago called The Modern Lady. And they were talking about this a couple weeks ago, how we really don't have much business knowing 
about the things that don't pertain to our lives directly. Again, I'm not telling you that you shouldn't understand what is going on in the world, but you want to put some boundaries on. You don't want to always be consuming the news. You don't want to always be talking with other people about their opinions on current events because that really puts you in a space of stress that, that takes on a lot more burden than you necessarily need in your everyday life. And this is going to impede your femininity because you're not going to be able to relax. Going kind of along with that point, I also wanted to touch on the practice of slowing down. We live in a fast paced society. You want to try to slow down. I've realized over the past couple of years that I've become a person that doesn't need to be constantly busy. Before I was chasing goals, activities, to put them on my resume because I was seeking validation as a modern woman. And as I stepped into the role of being a traditional housewife, I realized that there were so many things that, that didn't fulfill me that I was doing before just for the sake of telling people that I was doing them. Now, you don't have to be a traditional housewife like me. The important point here is that you have to learn to say no. You have to be comfortable with the notion of not having anything to do because this is when you really have the opportunity to self-reflect. You really have the opportunity to think about your day or connect with other people and it gives you that room for creativity and I have said so many times on this channel that creativity is a big aspect of femininity but if you're constantly chasing things you don't have the time or the energy to invest in creativity. So it's okay to let yourself be bored. It's okay to be bored because those are the opportunities where you're going to discover something new that ignites a passion that you truly are interested in. Talked about mental health, now let's talk about physical health. One unique and unconventional thing that I started doing as a part of my fertility journey when I started to see a naturopathic doctor was that I started eating more. And how does that tie into femininity, eating more? I've always been a person that carried her weight in lady parts. So I thought that the amount of food that I was eating before was adequate because it helped me stay trim. More in the same category of what you see as conventional beauty in today's modern society. But when I actually realized and a professional told me that I was not eating enough food, I was not eating enough healthy fats, I was not eating enough whole grains, I realized that the more that I nourished my body, the more I felt feminine because I felt more comfortable in the way that my actual body shape was designed. I felt more comfortable in carrying weight in those lady parts that I talked about. And there was the added benefit that I wasn't walking around starving. I advocated in the past for intermittent fasting, and I know that that can work for some of you, but I stopped doing that. So I want to put a little correction out there. I stopped intermittent fasting, and I was eating more consecutively. And a couple months later, after doing this, I'm not saying it was a direct result, but this is when I got pregnant. And having a healthy fertility, of course there are factors that are out of our control, and Anybody out there who is dealing with fertility issues, I don't want you to feel like I'm telling you it's your fault because I've been there and there are so many things that are out of our control and not our fault. But you want to have a healthy menstrual cycle and to be able to have a healthy menstrual cycle, you need to eat and have proper nutrition. And of course, along the topic of having more energy, feeling physically and mentally feminine, <laughs> I wanted to talk to you about prioritizing the long term. I've always talked about sustainable beauty, sustainable femininity, things that are going to be able to be carried with you throughout your whole life, habits, rituals, things that you do for, for your beauty every single day that don't require a lot of effort. I found this to be particularly good for me in my first trimester because I didn't have a lot of energy. I was very lethargic and since I had those basic things that I had been doing for countless years when it came to my beauty, my skincare and my hair, they were able to be maintained to a certain level. So that brings me to my point that I want to talk about today. When you evaluate a new thing that you want to incorporate when it comes to your femininity, your physical beauty, for example, I want you to think about the long term, where you're putting your energy, because decisional energy, for example, is a thing and you don't want to waste all of your energy in a day. You might have noticed that I don't always paint my nails and conventionally this would be seen as a quite an unfeminine thing but instead I decided to put my energy towards actually taking care of the health of my nails rather than exerting that extra effort into painting my nails. This is something that is just 
particular to me because I have a whole bunch of other steps and things that I do for my femininity and I was having chip nails before and I thought it just looked horrible so I don't need to give you all the reasons but you take that example and think about how it will apply to your life. Another unique and unconventional thing that I do for my femininity that not many people do nowadays in our modern society because it's constantly go 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 like I've mentioned a couple times in this video is that I exercise my imagination. I play games. I I imagine stories and I really let my mind wander when I'm walking outside for example. If you are a big reader you can do this through reading. I am not a big reader. I like audiobooks. But whatever you have to do to light that play side of yourself. This will help you with your femininity because we're tapping into creativity. So whatever suits your interests, try to play every single day. Try to let your imagination flow. Life doesn't have to be so serious. And when you do ignite that childlike spirit inside of you, you become a more alluring and attractive feminine woman and just an attractive person in itself because everybody wants to be with that person that still has that childlike spirit. Spirit. We're almost at the end of the video, but an important and kind of like tough love point that I wanted to bring up is that I admit my flaws. I am not a perfect person by any means. If you are in my life personally, you will know that I'm always trying to improve myself. I did a video about some of my flaws that I felt like I had last year. I will link that video above if you're interested in it. And it wasn't exactly a hit. I noticed that it got quite a few dislikes when I uploaded it immediately. And I think that's because we've created this cultural narrative of not being able to sit with our flaws, not being able to have the humility to admit that we are imperfect people. And this is, of course, a critical thing that you have to do as a Christian woman. I talked about a lot of times that I am a practicing Catholic. And when I grew into my womanhood from my adolescence, I found it incredibly difficult because after being a teenager and a child in our modern culture that can do no wrong, that of course wins all the participation trophies, that I in fact wasn't perfect and I embarked on being married from a young age so I also had to work on myself because that helps enhance a marriage when you understand that you are not perfect. And so this will really help your femininity because you want to know where you are weak to focus on only our strengths and of course I'm all for embracing your strength but those things come more naturally to us and it's really difficult to focus on those things where we really need to improve and lastly stop looking at things that will never be a reality in your life I talked about in my Gen Z video <laughs> that it's okay to follow people that you perhaps have initially felt jealousy towards because you want to work through those emotions so that you don't feel it towards those people so this might be a little bit confusing with what I have to say right now but once you work through those feelings I want you not to totally invest yourself in the practice of surrounding yourself with lifestyles and people that don't feed to your own reality so it's a fine line I don't want you to bubble yourself because of course for example the influencer that you might initially have been jealous of her house has a lot of valuable information when it comes to her newborn and then you have a newborn as well so you have to understand that balance I've noticed among Millennials especially as well as Gen Z there's this culture of surrounding yourself with a luxury lifestyle and I'm not saying that you can of course achieve that luxury lifestyle but when we're so focused on the materialistic aspects of our life this goes along the lines of beauty as well we don't take the time to evaluate our own lives, our own femininity. And this will also affect your self-esteem because you might be continuously comparing yourself to somebody else unnecessarily to a degree that is too much. And a big aspect of flourishing in your femininity is truly appreciating who you are, what you have to offer to the world. Because nobody's life, even if you are in the same social class as somebody else, is going to look like the person next to you. We are all unique individuals. 
And so we can't covet everything that other people have and we have to show gratitude towards our own feminine journey. All right, my lovely feminine friends, my sisters, I hope that you enjoyed today's video. Again, leave me a comment as always down below if you have something to add to the conversation. I appreciate you all so much. I'm so excited for the next video. Perhaps it will be a vlog. Give me a little bit of grace because I need a couple more days and weeks between videos, but I promise you, as long as you are all here enjoying the femininity message and I equally am enjoying making these videos for you i will always be here for you follow me on instagram it's easier to get a hold of me if you want to get a hold of me and ask me a question there or again comment on this video bye bye